Hey folks, what's going on here? Hey, this is Wesley, Billion Dollar Virgin with another Millionaire Midnight Rant. Welcome to the podcast, folks. This is the um, Wesley Billion Dollar Virgin Podcast. And I'm coming to you live from my bedroom here in Houston, Texas. And yes, I know you're looking at a black screen. If you're actually logged into my Instagram account here, but if you're on the podcast, well, the only thing that you do hear is my voice. And it's officially, um, it's like, to- well, let me see, December 26th here. Merry Christmas, everyone. But listen, um, I wanted to do a rant here tonight because I haven't did a question and answer in a very long time. And I want to give all of you the opportunity to, you know, definitely prepare for the new year, get your dreams, your goals, everything that you're thinking about for the new year to ensure that 2023 is going to be your six or seven figure year. How many of you believe that next year is your six or seven figure year? Just comment below six if you believe it's going to be your six figure, seven for seven figure. Or maybe you're already a millionaire, right? And you're looking to do eight to nine figures next year here. Go ahead and comment below here. And um, and I want that for you. That's why I go live here. And I'm here to educate you. Okay. Ask your favorite millionaire anything here. Um, as many of you know, I'm an advocate of you and your dreams. And I do this because I know a ton of you, you don't have any support. A lot of you don't have any help. Many of you don't have any positive reinforcements as it relates to your goals and dreams. And it's tough. And it's hard. It's very difficult. You know, really not making a million dollars. The difficult part is becoming the man or woman that millions of dollars will eventually pour into your bank account here, okay? So I'm here to make that journey a little bit easier for you, to educate you. I truly believe that knowledge is the precursor to experience that. The more knowledge a person has, then he or she is more equipped for experiences that take place on the planet here, okay? Um, so here we go. Uh, go ahead and post your questions below. And listen, if you want to put your name below as well, I'd love to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays as well. If you want to go ahead and comment your name below here. Or we can get right into it here because, listen, high energy, high income. We, we're we going to step into 2023 with high energy. How many of you believe that? Okay. We're going to step into two. 2023 with high energy because with high energy that equates to high income because the people who have high income and the people who have the high net worth, well, they have high energy, right? High energy means that they're positive about life. High energy means that they smile more than they frown. High energy means that they have a very optimistic look on reality here okay so let me give you guys a shout out here all right i'm gonna get right into the questions here i want to start a youtube automation business but i don't have enough startup capital what do you think i should do so first of all to start a youtube business you don't need a startup capital and listen before it can become automated you know i know you guys love the word automated right because it is kind of presumptuous right which means that you don't have to do any work, right? It's just automated. First of all, um, a YouTube business is not going to be automated in the beginning of the business. Okay. First thing you have to do is create it yourself and you're going to do all the work yourself. And it's a ton of work, but it's okay. Right. But you don't need starter capital. When I created my YouTube channel several years ago, all I had was a camera, which was my phone. And my enthusiasm, right? And that's it. I was recording fitness videos um, and I was uploading five videos per day. 
So what it takes is work ethic. It's a myth that we need startup capital to start a business. Uh, and many of you are still stuck with these old obsolescent views about what it takes to run a business. It takes work ethic. It takes taking action. It takes just stop talking so much about it and just do it. Make sense? Okay. How do you handle not taking action? How do I handle not taking? Well, I don't. Well, I always take action. So are you talking about other people? How do I handle other people not taking action? I mean, I always take action. So I don't. I don't know how to answer that question here because it's 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 not a day that goes by that I don't take action towards what I want. Questions here. I don't want to lie. I just want to be like you. Hey, I appreciate that. But listen, you know, I know a lot of you want to be like me. Some of you say, I want to be like you, Wes. And I get it. And and thank you for that. But listen, don't try to be like me. Let me tell you why. Because if you try to be like me, you're going to be discouraged. And I'm going to to explain to you what I mean here. Many of you, when you watch me, you look at my lifestyle here. You know, I know some of you saw the video uh, today. I blessed my son with a brand new uh, BMW M4. It's like a $90,000 car. And it's, it's gorgeous, by the way. It's blue. It's interior is orange. Trim. He's only 17 years old, but he deserved it. He's a young king. He listens to his father. I'm educating him. I am giving him the tools and resources for him to be a very, very successful man. And some of you might see that stuff. You may say, man, that's what I want to do for my son. I want to do that for my daughter. That's what I want. I want to live life like that. And, and like, you can see you in with my children. We're very close. You know, they're like my friends. They're really cool, right? <laughs> and some of you parents want to see, have that type of interaction here. Or you may see me just flying around the world doing what I want to do here. Listen, let me give you some advice. If you look at me, the man that I am right now, You're going to be discouraged because you're comparing yourself to where you are, to where I am today. But what you don't see, unfortunately, with anybody that's successful, you don't see all the struggle, all the pains, all the hurt, all the very difficult times to be this person, right? You don't see the times me sleeping on the air mattress. You don't see the times... When I slept in my car, you don't see the time when I invested money, so much money in companies and business and opportunities and couldn't pay my rent. You don't see the time that I've been in jail a few times and I lost my job and lost my apartment. You don't see the times I have to sleep on the floor of my next door neighbors because I got evicted from my place. You don't see the times when I used to ride the bus, the metro, two hours to a job to make eight bucks an hour. You don't see the time when I filed bankruptcy and when I pretty much screwed up my credit. You know, seen the times when I had the debt and loans that I couldn't pay off, right? You don't like you don't see that, unfortunately. And so you're comparing yourself to me today, to your situation right now. But what I suggest is this, honestly, because I want you to be the best version of yourself. I want you to begin to compare yourself to who you were yesterday, okay? Like, do it daily for one year. Like, think about everything that you did yesterday. What did you read? What did you do? What conversations did you have? Who was in your environment? Who did you text? What did you watch? What did you hear yesterday? And what did you do? What type of action did you put forth? Then say, you know what? Today... I'm going to do a little bit more. And the reason why that's important, because as human beings, we have to be able to see measurable progress. Because without seeing measurable progress, we tend to give up and we tend to quit. Like if we work, 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 but we don't see progress. We just assume that this is not for us. So it's very important for a human being to actually experience progress. And the progress is what took place yesterday. Okay. So whatever you did yesterday, do a little bit more today. And whatever you do today, do a little bit more tomorrow. Do that for one year. You'll be a totally different person. Okay? You'll be a totally different individual. 
But if every day you're trying to compare yourself to me, I want to be like you, Wes. I want to do what you do. I want to do what you do. You know, like I, I, in your head, I'm light here. I'm light years from where you are to where I am. Light years. Because it took me a decade, if not more, to be this person. Okay? Decade. Make sense? So compare yourself to who you were yesterday for you to be able to see measurable progress in your life. Okay? <clears throat> Questions here? Absolutely, girl. Take notes, my guys. I want, and listen, I want you folks to take notes here. If you notice it, I'm very calm. Today was a great day for me because, um, as you are aware, somebody did hack my servers. They hacked my email. Like, I can't check none of my emails right now. So, listen, don't send me any emails. If you get any email from me, any that is not me. It's a hacker out there that's trying to take money from people. And we own it. It just takes time. It's just an inconvenience. I mean, it doesn't really disrupt my business. It's just an inconvenience, honestly. <laughs> I mean, we're always going to make millions of dollars. It's just how it is. But, um, yeah, but I had to deal with it pretty much all day. But it's all good. You know, I'm, I'm happy, and I thank God for the hacker because it makes me sharper, right? I have to really think about security um, with what I'm currently doing here. And I'm, I'm, I'm extra happy because... Like, say if I was bringing in $300 million a year and I got hacked, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, that's a whole nother ball game here. So I'm glad it happened now so I can address it, tighten down security, because I have so many different accounts with so many things online. It's insane. And um, it kind of felt good not being able to check email today, honestly, because I don't like checking email because most email is junk anyway. So like I said before, uh, don't answer anything yet. I'll let you guys know when everything's pretty much smoothed out. We should have that done by tomorrow. Okay. Questions for me here, but take notes. Do you know who did it? I don't know him personally, but I did speak to the young man. And he wanted to extort me for money, obviously. He wants me to give him five BTCs. First of all, if you ever want to hack Wesley Virgin, first of all, one. And I want you to listen to me close here. Even if the hackers listen to me right now, I would never pay you a dime. Like, you can hack me for the rest of my life. I would never pay you one cent, okay? <laughs> um, two, but they don't realize I'm a computer. Well, I was a computer engineer, so I know the game. Man. I know how this all works, right? I'm not, I'm not a hacker on his level, but it's not a big deal for me, right? It's just inconvenience, and I'm always going, two things going to happen. The guy's either going to get caught, or two, I'm going secu to secure my systems in a way that I'm, I won't have any problems. So it's not a big deal for me. <laughs> Like my my brain, I'm a reverse engineer, which means I know how to solve problems, and that's just what I do. That's what entrepreneurs do, by the way, solve problems. Okay. Questions for me here. Questions. I'm sorry, uh, the lost one. What is your question for me? And what do you desire? Okay, here we go. Wes, I'm watching your videos like one year. I know you have a different strategy for making money. You don't tell your real strategy. Um, sweetheart, I don't understand what you're saying about I'm not telling my real strategy. Every video I've ever made about making money online, somebody's actually using that strategy to make money online. What you have to understand, so because a lot of you watch my YouTube channel, and some of you hear from my YouTube channel, right? You watch all these videos here to make money online. And you may say, oh, that's not working for me. That's not working for me. Let me tell you the big problem with a lot of you. It's just like you just have no willpower. The willpower to continue to try to fail until it works. Many of you, you'll try a technique one time, two times, three times, and then you give up. And um, that's unfortunate because that's just not how it works. Um, with any company, any business, anything that you do, it's just going to take time, right? And you may have to repeatedly go through it to make money. And people assume that people like myself are hiding secrets. Yeah, I'm worth $40 million. Yes, I own over 15 different internet companies or different products and, you know, 15 different streams of income, basically. But um, it's no secrets, I mean, honestly. I have, I mean, I've pretty much shared everything that I've ever done online to make money on my YouTube channel for free. As a matter of fact, you don't have to buy any of my products, honestly. You don't have to buy a thing. 
and I sell a ton of products. But listen, you don't have to buy anything. It's on. It's for free on my YouTube channel. I mean, it's a thousand videos, a lot of videos, but I'm telling you, it's some really good content. And a lot of that content on my YouTube channel, other people, marketers that I know personally, they sell you, they sell you this type of content that I'm giving away for free. But what I realize about people, and it's so unfortunate, is that people collectively are lazy, or they lack work ethic, or they lack willpower. It's just what it is. They just don't got it. And I just, and I just, and I realize that most people just don't have it. Think about it right now. I have two, like I have a million people that follow me, but I have 35 people here that's on the live. And some people might say, oh, that's just fake followers. That's why. But what you got to realize about people, everybody's going to have a response about something. Everybody's going to have their own two cents. But um, I'm here and I'm doing my due diligence and I, share my story and my philosophy about making money and becoming the person that you need to be to be able to explore and navigate the world in a way that you get what you want. I'm here for the 1%. I already know 1% of you are actually going to listen, take notes, take action, and apply what I'm sharing with you, 1%. Thousands of people may watch this video, millions of people, but only 1% of people will actually Use it, apply it, take action, and actually reap results from it. So it's not my responsibility to find out who that is, who, what man or what woman, what mama, what daddy on here is listening to me. Nah, I'm just sharing the message here, right? It's not for the preacher to save everybody. The preacher is there to communicate to the parishioners. He's just there to share the message. And whoever wants to listen to the message and actually use it, great. But if you just want to be here just to listen to something that makes you feel good in the moment here, well, we welcome you as well. But unfortunately, those people, they'll never be able to live their life the way that they should. Okay? What's next here? Wesley, I own a website like yours. I want to know how I can prevent whatever hack you have endured. Uh, I'll say this. I'm going to give you guys some advice here because, you know, some of you are making money. Some of you will eventually make money. And, you know, these hackers, they're smart, man. They're very smart. And when they target you, they target you. What you have to understand, too, what's happening in the world, if many of you don't realize there have been what is called data breaches um, at many companies like American Express, Amazon, um, it's just a lot of companies. And a data breach, a breach is when a hacker is able to access the database and he extracts uh, millions and hundreds of millions of emails and social security numbers. I mean, this guy showed me my social security number, right? He showed me my social security number, my address and everything, right? But it don't bother me. It's nothing. I mean, what can he do with it? Can't do much with it. And if he try to do something with my credit, who cares? I can get that just reversed. So it's not even a big deal to me, honestly. But um, unfortunately, because something that's called phishing, key loggers, I mean, just be very careful on clicking on the links. I will tell you that. Be very careful. I mean, these folks are really good um, right now. I mean, they're sending you emails. You're thinking as you open up an email from Walmart to get some for free. And you're downloading a key logger and everything that you type in your computer, they're logging it. And that's how they get your passwords. Or they send you a message in your Instagram account and say, hey, your account about to get closed. You need to verify. And you try to do that, you verify, but it was a phishing link, right? They're just getting your information. So that's why so many people accounts get hacked that way. Because people are just unknowingly because they're not computer people, right? So be very, very careful in what you click on. If you don't understand it, you don't get, don't click on it. If you didn't order it, don't click on it. Just don't, I'm telling you, because you will get caught. And another thing is make sure you activate two-factor authentication for everything. And two-factor authentication is this, like with your Instagram, you could do it as well. You could do it with email. It's just when you log in, you're forced to put in a code that you'll probably get to what is called an auth app. But what's easier, if you're not technical, you can do it with your phone number. So they'll send you a code, which means is anytime you log into anything on the Internet, they'll send you a code to your phone. 
and you get in. So it's like a two-step verification process. It's very important because it'll secure your account. Because let me tell you something. Once these hackers get started, you know, and, you know, me, I'm kind of significant on the Internet. So people assume I have a ton of money, which I do, and they want my money, but they're never going to get it, right? It's impossible. But uh, it just happens. So you just be smart, okay? Questions here? Let me see. And I would say Gmail is probably the best mail you want to use. Like they got into my Yahoo account. They deleted it. Actually, it's gone. <laughs> my Yahoo account is done right now. I really care about it, honestly. But um, Gmail. Now, Gmail, I would say this. Get a Gmail account. You got to be very careful when you get accounts like like they hacked my account, WesleyVirgin.com. Like right now, when you got, try to go to WesleyVirgin.com, the hacker has access to it right now. All right, now I can't do anything with the site until I contact GoDaddy and get it all sorted. But I would say if you're going to create an email, do not create an email like used in a domain outside of Gmail. Because if a hacker, if they, you know, I don't know how they do it, but they find a way. If they get into your hosting, they change the name servers, you're done, you're screwed. But with Gmail, they do a great job with security. It's, they really do a good job because if they notice somebody logs in from another place, um, it's other things that have to happen before a person can actually get into a Gmail account. So I would recommend Gmail, and that's why I'm going to be using just Gmail, and that's it. And make sure you put the two-factor authentication as well. All right, what's next here? Talk to me. What's up, Nikki? How are you? Questions for me here. No, nah, he didn't hack my computer. I mean, listen, there's just so many ways to get in. It's, it's so many vulnerabilities right now on the Internet. Uh, you don't even have to be that smart, honestly. Some people just give it information. I mean, I give example. Say if you have an email account on Yahoo and say if you lost and forgot the password. So you're going to have uh, a scammer. They can reach out to the person or to how you and say, hey, man, this is this is Wes. You know, I forgot my password. I don't know what it is. You know, I'm so sorry. I don't know what to do. You know, I really need this on. And they may say, well, can you verify this, 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 and say they know my address or whatever. You know, and then they'll keep doing it until they find somebody that's just stupid at Yahoo that they just give you the information. I mean, it can happen. I'm telling you, these these people are just, they spend their entire time doing this, their entire livelihood, which is unfortunate, but just how it is. All right, what's next here? But like I said, it's just an inconvenience. It's not even a big deal, honestly. How to not quit when things get tough? How do you become mentally resilient here? Well, that's a good question here, Golo. So the thing is, not quitting is a decision that an individual have to make. Okay? What you have to really understand about people that quit, well, they just have very, very weak minds, right? Their mentality is very weak, which means is they just can't take the stress. People that quit... Because they can't take the stress. And let me tell you something about a successful entrepreneur. What makes him very successful is not because of all the money he makes. It's because he's able to deal with a ton of stress. Like he can deal with so many problems all at one time. Like Think about Jeff Bezos. I mean, he, he's running all these different companies. He's like the second richest man in the world. He got to deal with uh, Amazon.com. Think, think about how many people steal from Amazon. Think about the CEO of Walmart. You know how many people steal from Walmart? They had an article out there that said Walmart may have to close down some stores because people are just stealing. I mean, they're just stealing so much. It's insane here. So you got to think about all that stuff he has to deal with. At the same time, he's going to take care of his employees. He got to deal with thievery. He got to deal with security breaches. It's just a lot, right? So, and unfortunately, many people just can't deal with a man of stress, right? And if you can't manage stress in your life, especially when it comes to a business, well, you're not going to have a successful business because that's what makes successful entrepreneurs successful. It's because our ability to manage a lot of stuff all at one time and not to be too emotionally charged based off the things that take place in our business or in our life. Because at the same time, like I still got a life like me. I have to run a business. I got to make sure the business stay good. I got employees. I got children. I got employees that work in my, like, it's a lot, right? Then I got to work. It's a lot. But to me, it's not even a big deal. It's very easy for me to manage all this stuff. 
And you may say, well, how are you like that? Well, I choose to do that. You know, I choose. I use some of the techniques that I do to help me manage all this stuff. I meditate. So, Kilo, I would tell you to meditate. Learn how to meditate. You want to be more resilient. You want to be more mentally tough. Meditate. Because what tends to happen is with people, they tend to want to solve all the problems all at one time. Listen, right now, I can't solve every problem with this hacker right now. He hacks so many different systems right now. I can't fix everything in one day. It's impossible. I mean, I just can't do it, you know. Right now, the hacker is in my ESP right now, my email service provider. He's in there because he tried to blast some emails out to you, right? Luckily, Sin Lane caught, caught it and flagged it. But right now, he has access to it. And right now, I can't do anything about it. I just can't. I have to wait, right? It's Christmas. It was the best time to do it, right? Everybody's off. But I can't be thinking about, oh, my God, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? No, let me tell you what I do. Everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. So it's no problem. I'm going to eventually get access to it again. I'm going to eventually kick them out. It's not even a big deal, right? You have to have that type of mentality and realize that what you're thinking that may go wrong, you're thinking it's exacerbating a situation that's probably not even a big deal. You're just thinking about all the horrible things that may take place, right? So I don't do that. I don't think about the horrible things that take place. And meditation helps you through this process. Because remember, through meditation, we rehearse or we think about what we want. Many of you can't handle stress because you keep thinking about what you don't want. I don't want to be hurt. I don't want to lose money. I don't want to lose this. I don't want to lose time. I don't want to be in pain. I don't want to get my heart broken. Right? So you're thinking about what you don't want. I don't want to be broke. You know, I don't want to get older. <laughs> you keep thinking about what you don't want, so it just consumes your mind. So those things that you think about will bring those type of things in your life. Does that make sense? So I would suggest to think about what you want, right? Because at the end of the day, you're not going to die. Anything that happens to you, you know, stuff like this, people stealing money, you know, whatever, trying to take down your website, Tearing down your youth. Oh, you know, whatever. I mean, you're not going to die, right? You can always fix it and put it back together again. It's not even a big deal. It's just an inconvenience. But so you got to remember that you're not going to die. And then it makes you more resilient if you choose to go through the adversity. Going through the adversity is what builds that mental muscle. It's like going to the gym. If you want to get bigger and stronger, well, you have to lift more weights. Is it comfortable? Absolutely not. It hurts. Like right now, I'm in pain. My back is killing me right now because I've been lifting weights like a crazy person. And tomorrow I'm going to the gym and I'm going to rock it for two hours. Who cares? Sore, hurting, because it's necessary for growth. Like pain, listen, write this down below because you already know this, but I'm going to say it again. Pain is necessary for all growth in life, period. Pain, discomfort, all right? And how you handle pain and how you deal with pain is going to determine your success or your failure. And I can deal with the pain. I'm good with it. You know, I don't want it, but I can deal with it. You know, stressful moments, you know, uh, moments of annoyance. I can deal with it. It's not even a big deal. I just deal with it. I'm a solution guy. I don't care whatever you bring at me. I'm just going to, what's the solution? Whatever happens. Well, Wes, your entire company just failed. Okay, what's the solution? Wesley, they just stole a million dollars of your bank account. What's the solution? That's just me. You know what I mean? Because I, I don't have time. I have no moments to cry about it, to bitch about it, to complain about it. Um, a CEO of any company or a leader of any company understand that he must discover the solution and discover that solution fast. Okay? Questions here. Does that make sense? Are you folks assimilating this information here? You know, I'm just, listen, I'm being very genuine with you here because I know some of you think I don't have problems. I just don't look at my issues as problems. A lot of you may say, well, today you had a big problem, huh, Wes? No, today was a learning situation for me. I learned something about my system that they were vulnerable. I'm glad it happened now so I could deal with it now. Say if I was dealing with if my one of my products was, like we just launched uh, a supplement company, See if I was selling a thousand supplements a day and this happened. 
My God, that'd be a clusterfuck, right? So let's get everything resolved now when we're not doing as many units here, right? That's, that's, that's fix the handicaps that's in the business now and secure things now. It's just gonna be, it's gonna make me just more sharper, okay? And that's how I want you to think. When things don't go well, that's just an opportunity for you to be sharper, right? To discover the solution for the adversity or the problem. What's next here? I know you folks are getting value here. I appreciate it. How you stay so focused. Easy. What you folks don't know that I worked on Christmas. Now, maybe you do know. You know, where everybody was out there opening up presents. Where everybody was out there eating turkey. Eating yams, greens, smacking. You know, some of y'all smacking on that food. Eating that butter pecan pie. Talking to your nephew, your uncle, your cousin, your feet is working. And you may say, well, how do you stay so focused? Well, let me share something with you. I just made it. I made a decision. <laughs> That's it. And the decision that I made was this, that if I want something, okay, it can be in business and it's in business right now. If I want something and if I'm building something, well, that has all my attention. And I don't care about a holiday. Like, my birthday is next month. I don't care about the birthday. Okay, great. I'm going to have a birthday every single year for the rest of my life until I die. Give me a second, folks. My TV just arbitrarily turned on for no reason. Hold on. But does that make sense? I I don't have time to. I'm not celebrating holidays right now. Right? Because Christmas is going to come next year. But next year, I'll be on a private jet. See? <laughs> Hold on. And see, another thing that I do, okay? I just refuse to be like the masses. Okay? Are you with me here? You know, listen, I'm, I'm speaking facts here. See, all of you want to be great. You want to be rich, prosperous, successful, you know, able to do whatever you want to do. But you don't want to sacrifice anything. You don't want to sacrifice. You just feel this obligation for you to celebrate Christmas. <laughs> like you have to do it. You're like, oh, yeah. Christmas, I got to celebrate, got to go with the family for the holidays. Like you feel like you have to. And what you don't realize, you're just conforming to everybody else. And listen, it's okay if that's what you want to do. But let me tell you something. It's a group of people that they choose not to conform because they're just so consumed with their work. And many of you would never understand it, right? Well, what are you going to do for Christmas? You know, that's what people ask me. What are you going to do for Christmas, Wesley? What are you going to do for Christmas, Wesley? What are you going to do? What are you going to do this year? Work. That's what I'm doing. My maid asked me, what are you going to do for Christmas? Work. My chef asked me, what are you going to do for Work. Work. I'm not going to nobody's house. Don't invite me because I won't be there. Okay? I'm working. And you may say, well, but Wesley, don't you need a little downtime? Wesley, you've been working all year. Okay? I mean, you've been working since January. I mean, come on, can you take a little downtime? No. Why? Because I'm close. I'm close with achieving the goal, man. That's it. And I mean, you just won't get it. I mean, I'm, you know, it's just, you don't get it. You, you don't. You just stop. And it's because, and you probably don't get it because you just, you know what you say you want? Maybe you really don't want it. And maybe... Which you don't realize that wanting is not enough. Like I've made a commitment, you know, and I'm going to be honest, you know, it's so many things that take that takes place on the planet. It's just so irrelevant. It's so irrelevant. And it's so like useless and so just trivial, just unimportant. Like going out, drinking, celebrating the holidays. I don't know. It's me. It just makes I don't 
Now when you have a goal, now if you don't have a goal, I get it. You know, you want to have a little fun. But now when you have something that consumes you, okay, and um, that's where I am. So I get it. If you had a great time this Christmas, then that's cool. But when you see me in a year or two years, when you see me on every billboard around the world, when you see me on every TV channel around the world, every podcast around the world, when you see me getting all these awards and accolades and speaking to millions of people on stages around the world, on the private jet around the world, right? Uh, when you see all this, when you see the progression, when you see my houses in France and houses in L.A. and houses in Atlanta and in Miami, all over the world, right? When you see all this stuff happen right before your eyes, um, just remember what I was talking about the day after Christmas, just so you got to remember all of it. This is why I do these ranch too. These ranch is not just for you. It's for me to, it's for you to be able to see my own personal journey. Yes, I'm already pretty rich, but it's for you to see my progression. I want you guys to see my progress. So I do these rants. So you be able to hear what I'm doing. Well, everybody's doing something different. You're going to see that I'm doing the complete different what everybody else is doing. And then, you know, two, three, four, five years, then you see me as the most significant person on the planet here. And you're going to be like, damn. You won't be able to say damn because you're going to be like, oh, yeah. Well, he did say he'll be there. Well, he did sacrifice. Well, he did work on Christmas. He worked on his birthday. He he really just put himself in a box and he just worked. Um, he did these rants too as well. So everything that Wesley has, I see why he has it. I have people that come in on my stuff now. They say, Wesley, I remember following you 10 years ago. We didn't have a pot to piss in. I remember when you first started the YouTube channel. These are people that email me. This is the people that write on my uh, comments under my video here, uh, under my uh, my rants here. They say, I remember, I remember you four years ago. I remember you five years ago. I remember this. I remember this. Yeah. And look at me now, still making progress. Still climbing the mountain. Still conquering my goals. Still making more money than, than ever before. Still disciplined. Still maturing myself. Still elevating. Still making progress. Because that's how it's done. Talk to me. Yeah, see see that? See the young man below? He said, I remember when Ty Lopez shouted you out. Remember Ty Lopez? Years ago when he blew up. You know, I'm just... <laughs> I want you folks to see the journey. My own personal journey here. Hey, Michaela, how are you? What's next here? Uh, what's next? Talk to me. Questions here. I'm sure you're taking notes here. I'm still struggling to be self-disciplined. I'm getting in my own way. No, you're not struggling to be self-disciplined. You don't want to be self-disciplined. You know when women say... You know, when a man says he's too busy and then a woman says, well, if a man really want to talk to you, he would. You guys know what I'm talking about? You know, women say this. You know, you tell a woman, hey, I'm busy all the time. I'm busy. I'm busy. You're not busy because if you really wanted to talk to me, you would. Any person that really wants to talk to a person or be with a person, they're going to make the effort. Well, guess what? A person that really wants to be self-disciplined will be. You just don't want to be self-disciplined. See, I switched that. <laughs> You'll say it's not fair, though. All right? You just don't want to be self-disciplined. Just be honest. Stop saying that you want to do. You know, I can't stand people that keep that begin to reiterate art. They, they suggest that they want to be this way. Like, I want to be self-discipline. Well, you know, I want to be focused. Well, I want to be, I want to be. No, you don't. Shut, shut up. You do not want to be focused. 
Because if you really wanted to be focused, you would be. You do not want to be focused. You do not want to be self-disciplined. You do not want to be motivated. You do not. It's just something to say. And you're playing with your you're playing these mind games with yourself. Because listen, it's like a man that said, you know, I want to love you, but you know, I just don't know how. No, it don't work that way. The man either loves you or he doesn't. You either want to be self-disciplined or you don't. For you to play that game with your mind, you're playing mind games with yourself. You just don't want to be self-disciplined. Be honest. It's like the person that says, you know, I really want to work out, but I just can't get myself to go. You don't want to work out, big head. You don't. Say that. Like, don't tell me, well, you know, I, I, I really want to work. I really want to get my body right. I really want to make money. I really want to. No, you don't. Because you ain't doing shit. People like that, I want to slap shit out of, honestly. You know, with love, of course. Because they're playing mind games with themselves, right? I know people who have been doing this for years. They, they've been saying this stuff for years. You know, I, you know, I really want, I really want, you ever met a person like that? I really want to. You know, I really want to just start that company. I really want to start that. You know, I really want to leave my job. I really want. No, you don't. What are you talking about? You do not. Because if you really wanted to do it, you would have already done it. Am I right or right? Okay. Next question for me here. I want to be self-disciplined privately. First of all, the word wanna is not a word. Want to. Listen, if you're going to be in this rant here, you're going to be educated. And if you're not educated, you're going to act like you are educated, which means is when you comment below in my rant, use correct English. I don't want to see the letter U for Y-O-U. I don't want to see because BC. I don't want to see I don't know IDN. I don't want to see wanna when you mean want to. I don't want to see that shit. Speak and write properly. Okay? Thank you. What's the next year? Talk to me. Are you getting value here tonight? She says, maybe I don't want it bad enough. Of course you don't want it bad enough. You do not. Okay? Wesley, the Tic Tac ads work really good. Thank you, brother. I'm glad you're making money. What's next? Your questions for me, please. Doing forest for, th for three years, finally seeing results. Just bought the new Bronco. Congratulations. Making moves, Moan. I like to see great stories like that, okay? I love to see and hear stories of people who have been consuming my content here because I've been on these ranch for about, about three years now, and I have so many stories of people who haven't even bought my products. They just, they're just on the rants, and the rants have I've, – I've, I've had emails from people who have made millions of dollars based off the rant, and they had nothing, and now they're millionaires from the rant. People now that have successful businesses because of the rant. Okay. So thank you for the stories, folks. I really appreciate that. Hey, Letitia, how are you? Is that you, Uncle Wesley? Absolutely. Hey, Amanda, how are you? Wesley, you do not cap everything you say is the truth. Thank you. Absolutely, it's my truth. What's next here? <clears throat> Questions. What's the best program that you have that you can make money immediately? I mean, what are you talking about? Who is this? The top notch? Uh, immediately? What's, what, what does that even mean? Immediately. <laughs> immediately could be two years, right? You know... 
Young lady, can I be just direct with you? I love you, but you just want something for nothing. And you're living in the wrong world because in the world that I live in and everybody else lives in, there's no such thing as something for nothing. You think it's a magic pill, don't you? Something you can do and all of a sudden it's going to rain money. Well, guess what? In that world, that's an illusion. It's like the woman. Watch this. It's like the woman that truly believes that she's going to be with a high value man. That's a great provider. Looks good. Sexes her very well. Emotionally available. Emotionally intelligent. Can learn from him. Listens to her. And he'll never cheat or he'll never go outside and explore his options. <laughs> you know, I mean, you got women out there that still believe in that fairy tale. And many women that hold to their gun, they be like, I'm going to find that man. He's going to be everything I've ever wanted. And I'm telling you, I'm going to marry him. And I'm going to say, bullshit. Yeah, I get it. It's a fairy tale. And I, it's just like you only top notch. Believing that, you know. You want me to give you something that you're going to make money immediately. Listen, even if I gave you something and told you what to do, you won't do it. No, you won't. You just wouldn't do it, honestly. So it'd just be a waste of my breath and time to give you anything because you wouldn't do it. Because I already know that you want something for nothing. You don't want to put in the work. You do not. Just based on what you said here. That's why it's so easy for me to size up people. Very quickly, you know, within like two to three minutes, I already know if a person's going to be successful or they're going to be just normal, regulatory, average. It's for, just listen to people how they talk. Hey, hey, how can I get rich tomorrow morning, Wes? You're going to be broke forever. And I, and I meant that all out of love, young people. Okay? What's next there? I have a friend worth fifty million was in his wedding and invited me to his Christmas party. How can one add value to someone aiming for a billion when you haven't made a hundred K? Exactly. You probably can't add any value to his life. You probably can't. Right? You probably cannot. You know, I know many of you watch videos where they say you don't add value to other people's lives. I truly believe that too, but some people you can't add value. Like Jeff Bezos. I can't add any value to this guy's life. Come on. What value can I add to this? This guy's worth $100 billion. What value can I add to his life? Elon Musk. Right? Which means is you got to find somebody a little bit closer to your level. <laughs> Look, if you haven't made $100,000, like, listen, if I was making 10 or $20 billion, maybe, maybe, you know, he may, may hear me out. But if you haven't made 100K and you got a friend that's worth $50 million, well, maybe you need to find a guy that's making $100,000. Then you can add value to that guy. It's levels. You got to understand something about money. When people make more and more and more money, they don't want to deal with a lot of people, honestly. The more money you make, the less amount of people you want to deal with. Because the the EQ level, like the intelligence is insane. And it's not just because they're just super, super smart, like they're a genius or something. It's just their ability to focus. People that do very well financially, they have a very, very uh, um, skill to be able to focus on something in a way that Many of you would never be able to even understand, okay? Because that's how it happens. Because focus builds intellect in a niche or in a subject matter, whatever you're working on. If, you focus, if you're a basketball player, you focus on basketball like, you know, 10 hours a day, within 10 years, you're going to be really, really good, right? And when you focus on things, it's because you're separating from other things, like when people say, oh, well, I want to increase my focus, well, separate from everything that you're currently doing. Like everything that you're doing that is trivial and very unimportant, stop. Video games, stop. Going, going out with friends, stop. Going to restaurants, stop. Taking vacations you can't afford, stop. Going to the club, stop. Going to the bar, stop. Hanging out with friends, stop. 
Texting people, stop. Answering the phone, stop. On social media all day, stop. Like if you separate from all those things and isolate yourself from all those things that you used to do, you can be very focused because now you have time to do what you're supposed to do because you're not doing other things. Does that make sense? What do you do to embrace your creativity on the creative side? Honestly, I meditate. I meditate and I read. It's one thing about me. If you want to know what makes me and what turns me on, what turns me on is not women. I love women, but they don't turn me on. Not the way that reading does and not the way that meditating does. I love that. I love reading and I love meditating. Okay? So that keeps me... Very, very creative. Questions for me here. Comment below, please. Are you getting value? Absolutely. Beyonce, how are you? Hey, Jesse, how are you? We have some new people in here tonight. Janet, take notes, by the way. Okay, just in case I lose this video here. Do you meditate with music? Yes. I do. What's next? Ziggy. Play meditation music. Here's a station you might like. Meditation on Amazon Music. We've got Age Turner. Wesley, advice on becoming a powerful high-level individual for 2023. Ziggy, turn it down to four. Any practical tips to start the new year right? Ziggy, turn it down to three. So this is a young man asking me this question. First of all, uh, we'll say high-level man, okay? Not individual, a man. For you to be very specific on the person you want to be, right? You don't want to be a woman, you want to be a high-level man, okay? Not individual. Because to be a high-level individual or a high-level man as it relates to becoming a high-level, a high-value woman is totally different. So, and I did a live on this maybe a week ago, but I give you the bravery of it. <laughs> and this is for all men. All men to be a high-value Man in 2023. And I'm going to give you very practical tips. Like I've stated before and I'm going to state again, there are a few areas, about four areas in life that men need to master. And one of those things are not women, by the way. A lot of you men think, you get, no, forget about women. Okay? There's four things that if a man masters these four things, there's nothing on the planet that he can't have. He'll be the type of man that people admire. He'll be the type of man when he walks into a room, people will watch him. People will respect this man. People would love this man. Millions, hundreds of millions of people. So let me give it to you. One, your physicality, which is it's your responsibility as a man to make yourself as physically attractive as humanly possible. I get it. Everybody's not born mixed. Everybody's not born symmetrically looking a certain way. But listen, let me tell you something about physicality. Every man can look better than what he... he every man can look better than what, how he is currently looking, okay? I give you a, f a few things you can do. Work out every single day, five to six days a week, every day. And I need you need to work your body... And every time you leave that gym, you need to be in pain, period. It's just how it is because you got to push yourself, okay? At first, in the beginning, it's going to be very difficult. You're going to want to quit. But after you do it for six months, it's not going to matter. You're going to be numb to the pain, okay? Another thing, you need to groom yourself properly. Groom yourself properly, which means this. Whenever you leave your house, you need to look, smell your best all the time. Do you hear me? All the time. Your hair should be cut, trimmed 
all the time. Your beard should be trimmed all the time. Does that make sense? You should have a facial routine, which means you should have beautiful skin. If your skin is not the best, do research. Go to TikTok. They have many videos that show you how to fix your skin. And many of you have bad skin, men, because you eat so piss poorly, you drink too much. Stop drinking alcohol, drink more water, you'll clear up your skin very quickly here. Okay, you with me here? So physicality, two, your money. Period. You want to be a high-value man, you need to be rich. Rich means that you have more money than you can spend. You have enough money not only to take care of yourself, but you can take care of the people around you. And it comes in faster than you can spend it. Does that make sense? That's wealth. You got to match the money. You have to develop a relationship with money. That money just comes in your life passively, automatically, all the time. Does that make sense? Three, communication. You must learn how to use words. You must learn how to express your ideas. You have to learn how to talk. You have to learn how to speak. You have to learn how to use different words. You have to learn how, how not to say, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? You got to stop that. Okay? You must learn how to articulate yourself. Okay? Communication is very important. You communicate with not just women, business people, people in general. You must learn how to speak. And you must learn how to speak in a way that people not only listen to you, they enjoy listening to you. Like they crave hearing your voice. And you need to learn how to only speak when you have something great to say. Because it's not always about what you say, it's about how you say it. You got to master that skill, the communication skill. Okay, and the last one is your emotional intelligence. Men, you have to learn to be a stoic. You have to learn to be able to operate very handsomely in chaotic situations. You have to learn how to be very calm when situations are out of hand. You have to learn how to manage your anger, manage your disappointments. You have to learn how to manage yourself emotionally, right? That's called emotional intelligence when things happen in your life. You have to learn how not to internalize things, especially when it comes to women. You have to learn not to argue with women. You have to learn not to expose your insecurities with women. Got to be very careful about this. You got to learn to be a stoic, very neutral when you're around any type of chaotic or any type of situations that is deemed to work against you. Does that make sense? Those areas is what you need to master. And those are practical things you can do. Like for communication, if you want to be a better communicator, stop hanging around your friends, Pookie and Ray Ray. I get it. You love your boys. I mean, you love your, I mean, some of you guys, you love your boys so much. I think that you like men, you know, I'm like, man, how much do you love this man? I mean, do you want to date him? You want to kiss him? You know, some of you love your boys too much. Oh, that's my boy. That's my dog. I love him. I love him to death. I love him to like, I do anything for that guy. You, you silly. You stupid. You sound that way, right? You need to release yourself from Pookie and Ray Ray and get around people that communicate well. Listen, if you don't know anybody that communicates well, Go to the internet, go to YouTube, listen to people who speak well. Set. It. It's just like if you want to learn French, go to Paris for six months, you will learn the language. When you put yourself in a different environment, you will automatically assimilate the way that people talk, tonality, voice inflection, cadence very easily. Okay? I, I, um, <clears throat> Does that make sense, young man? That's the brevity of it here. If you want to watch the entire podcast, just go to my podcast, on Wesley Billion Dollar Virgin Podcast. I do a two-hour special on what it takes to be a high-value man. 
And yes, you guessed right. I am a motherfucking high value man. Of course I am. Right. And this is what every man should want to be. Absolute age turner. <sighs> but yes, the Pookie and Ray Ray thing. I know you folks laugh about that. But I'm very, I'm very serious about that. I'm dead serious. Some of you are too old to be around the same people that you've been around in high school and college and at your job. You're hanging around these people because they're familiar. You're familiar with them. You're hanging around these people because they know everything about you and you have rapport with them. But let me tell you something about the people that you're around, that you're used to. These people will keep you exactly where you are in 2023. You'll see. Like, you don't have to believe nor trust me. If you think that, well, I still can be around my broke average friend or my friend that's just like me. If I can, I can still hang around Pookie and Ray Ray, go to his house and play video games and watch basketball and go chase girls together. Okay, we'll do it in 2023. And we'll check up on you in December next year. And we'll see the progress that you've made in your life. And if you haven't made any progress and you still have Pookie and Ray Ray in your life, that should be a distinction, and that should tell you that maybe you need to do something different, okay? Questions here? Absolutely, girl. <laughs> Everybody's calling me Uncle Wesley here tonight here. Questions for me here. And women, you know, I got some for you as well. Um... I know some women on here wants to be a high value woman and another word for that she wants to be rich and successful. Ziggy, turn it down to two. And let me share some with you. Let me let me could I be very candid with women here tonight, if you don't mind. And listen, don't throw rocks at me and don't get upset at me and don't get overly emotional. I need you to have an open mind and just accept it. You don't have to believe it, but listen to it. Right? You gotta choose one. Which means is you got to choose to build your business and be this rich, wealthy, superstar woman. Or you got to be the woman that's going to find a man, get married, and have a bunch of children. Okay, you can't have both. Now, listen, I know some of you want me. Oh, you can't have both. Listen. When I say you can't have both, you can't have both all at once. It's just not going to happen that way. Okay? You're not going to be this super, super rich woman. And at the same time, you have, unless you're going to do OnlyFans, right? Unless you're going to do something derogatory and something stupid and silly. That's not a business. A lot of, you know, a lot of, listen, and I'm not trying to clown OnlyFans, but OnlyFans is not a business, first of all. Come on. Anytime you have to, I mean, exotic dancing, this is not a business, man. Stop it. You know, you folks getting all this fast money, whatever. It's not a business at all. Um, so, like I said, you can't have both women. You're either going to focus on the business or you're going to focus on the husband. Okay? There's no such thing as balance at all. People that's talking about, all oh, that's balance. They're balanced. There's no balance in relationships when someone is out there making millions and millions and millions of dollars here. Like, I have no balance in my life. And I'm not seeking balance. Right? I understand there's a sacrifice even socially, for me to be the man that I am here today. And I'm okay with that. So balance. I work more than I play. So what? I like it. That's my life. So women, you got to choose. You want the husband or you want the money. Okay? You're not going to have both all at one time. You got to get one of those things first. And some of the women that get the money you become rich. Because it's, it's a lot of rich women on the planet here. Don't get it twisted here. It's very difficult for her to find a man that she wants. And let me tell you why. Because no masculine man that is a high-value man wants a woman that is masculine like him. And what you're going to realize is you're going to, have, you're going to have some of the attributes and some of the traits that are necessary for you to run a very successful business. And we're talking about millions of dollars. You're going to have manly traits. You're going to be super, super confident, very authoritative. You're going to be very decisive. You're going to be smart. You're going to always want to give your opinion. And sometimes women like that, they start to act that way in a relationship with a man. And I'm not generalizing. I'm not saying every woman is like this. But predominantly, it's just what it is, right? Because I've dated women like this. 
Some women that make a ton of money, it's very difficult for them to find a man because they definitely want a man that makes less than them or a man that can't teach them nothing. They want a man that's more successful than them. But the issue is men that are very successful tend to want women that are not successful, honestly, submissive, kind, nurturing type women, right? And for all the women that want to find a man, if you want to find a high value man, a rich man, a good looking man, a man that understands you, a man that you're proud to call him your man, right? You want that type of man, a man that's a provider, a man that's not talking about this 50-50 bullshit, a man that's a true king and he takes care of you, he provides for you, he treats you very well, right? That type of man. Well, listen, women, if you want a man like that, you got to be willing to be the type of woman that a man like that wants, okay? And I was watching a little video on TikTok today, and it was this lady, older lady. And you know what she said? She said something very profound to women. She said women spend so much time trying to change their booties, their breasts, their lips, their eyes, their faces, their cheeks, their hair, their legs, their entire body. But she said what women need to do is change their fucking attitude. That's her words, not mine. She said you need to change your attitude. You need to be nicer to men, right? You need to be more submissive. You need to be more agreeable, more cooperative, right? But women are always trying to change their physical features, but their attitude stinks, right? <laughs> so I would suggest this to you, women, is you want to find you this extraordinary man, this picture of a man that you've created in your mind, then you got to be willing to be the type of woman that that man will want, which means you need to have a pleasing attitude. Which means is stop talking so much. Now, see, a lot of women don't like that when I say that. Talk, talk. Well, I can't talk. I can't. You can talk, but when you talk, be very careful with your delivery. Be the type of woman that you motivate your man, encourage your man, tell your man that he is the man. Call your man daddy. Call him the king. Rub his feet. Rub his head. Hug him. Massage him. I mean, it's not like you're sleeping on a fucking air mattress in a penthouse. You're in a big old mansion, huh? He got you first class around the world. Take care of your man. Feed your man. A lot of you young women today, even some of you older women in your third, don't even know how to cook. That's insane to me. You know, don't even know how to cook. And you don't even want to cook. And now you want, I met this one young lady. She says, well, my man, he should cook too. I said, you need to make a decision. You want that, you want that man to be a man, a man or a woman. Okay? And listen, I'm not trying to, I'm not being misogynistic here. I'm just saying that people have roles. A man can't do everything. You want a man to provide all day? And you want him to come home to cook the dinner too? Well, what are you going to do? You can't have it both ways, women. It's a role that you got to play for it to work. And a lot of you women have all these weird, distorted visions on how a man should be and how relationships should be. And a lot of you women, you're like, you're living in a fairy tale world. You're going to be old one day talking about what you want. You're not going to get it. And when you hit 30 and 40 and 50 years old, no one's going to want you. They're going to want, like me and like myself, we'll want the 20-year-olds. It just And that's just how it is, right? And it's not like we won't date older women. But the thing is, the distinction between younger women and older women, <laughs> older women think they the shit. Older women like, I ain't dealing with nothing. I'm the prize. I'm this. I'm that. And I'm like, prove it to me then. Tell me why you're the prize. Why are you such a catch? You know, every woman on the planet, like, and listen, I'm not trying to get into a rant about women here, but just the truth. You know, every woman says they are a catch. And my question is why? Because I'm loyal. I don't give a fuck that you loyal. That's like a man saying that he take care of his kids and feeling proud about that. You're supposed to take care of your mother. Like you're supposed to take care of your kids. You're supposed to be loyal. I'm not going to give you a medal because you loyal. Well, I'm loyal. I'm not. <laughs> What's next here? Hey, Wesley, what do you think about click funnels? I love it. I use it all the time. What's the next here, folks? Um, <clears throat> questions. Talk to me here. Talk to me here. Uh. <laughs> See, I knew women was going to write, I want both. Of course. Because that's why that's how women are. They want both. They want everything. You know what? You know what's so funny about women? Women. I was talking to this young lady. You know, um, 
women, they, they want a man that's nice to them, that loves them to life. But at the same time, they want a, 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 a man that ignores them. A man that treats them bad, a little, treats her, you know, uh, I, I don't want to say badly, but <laughs> when I'm saying this, anytime a man is too predictable, a woman gets bored. It's just how it is. Whenever a time, you know, I told this woman, she said, well, I want to get what I want from a man. I said, you'll never get exactly what you want from a man if you actually want to value that man. The, the man that gives you everything that you want, when you want it, you will devalue him. And that's what she was doing. She had a very successful man, a billionaire, rich, give her whatever she wants. And he did. And she found a reason to leave him. And a lot of women do this, by the way. And let me tell you something. I told that woman to her face, I said, hey, let me tell you something. The man that you end up with, you know, that you actually cry about, because you will cry about a man one day if you actually value and want a relationship, it's going to be the man that's not going to give you what you want. Because he can't. And he shouldn't. Okay? No man should give a woman everything what she wants at all. Period. Okay? And you might say, why? Why can't the man give me everything that I want? Why can't he just always just give me what I want all? Because you're going to devalue that man. Because it's like that man doesn't have a backbone. It's like that man. Women love when a man tells them no. Stop. No. Close your mouth. Stop it. What did I say? Women love that shit. And let me tell you something, man. Don't be convinced that women don't like to be checked. Every woman on the fucking planet wants to be checked. They won't tell you that. Some will. The, the smart ones will, the intelligent women, they will say, yeah, sometimes I want to be checked. And sometimes I need to be checked. Sometimes I need to be in my place. But you got some idiot women, you know, some, I don't mean to say idiot, but you have some very ignorant women that say, ain't no man going to check me. Nobody going to check me. No one going to rate divorce with me. And those are the single women on the planet, you know. They're going to be single for the rest of their lives here. Okay? So I just thought I'd give you guys a little game there. <clears throat> You see, see how the women come in and below? This is so true because it is true. Everyone wants to be checked. Whenever a woman just runs over a man, like if you ask, if a, if a woman does everything, everything this woman says and you just does, come over here. I want this. Well, do this. I didn't like this. I'm upset at you about this. Are you insane? And you just say, okay, baby, okay, baby, okay, baby. She would devalue you. Because she don't feel nothing. She'll say, you know what? Let me tell you what women do. It never happened to me. Because, fuck, I don't, I don't play that shit, right? I don't have no problem with women at all. Um, but I know a lot of men that do have problems with women. And women would just start to say, you know what? I just don't, I just don't know what it is. I just, I'm just not feeling it. I just don't know. I don't, I, I don't know what it is. <laughs> ah, I know what it is. You devalue that man. Because... He gave you everything that you thought that you wanted, and he gave it to you. And now you're like, eh, you don't feel that fire. Women got to feel the fire from a woman, from a man. Women got to feel that sexual energy, that that problem, that lying mentality. She got to feel that shit. I'm telling you, it's all, it's all instinctive. It's just, it's just um, um, I can't think of the word I'm thinking, uh, I'm trying to search for. But women need to feel that power from a man. It turns her on. Does that make sense? It's got to feel it. <laughs> All right, what's next here? How do you control your wife in a proper way when she tries to be an alpha in a relationship? You got to check her, man. You got to check her. You say, hey, let me share something with you, sweetheart. I love you. But you can be alpha out there when you run business, when you run your company, and you deal with your employees. You can be an alpha woman, and I'm proud of you. you know, I want you to do your best. But when you're with me, I need you to be the little girl that I love. I need you to be the little submissive little kitten that I met years ago, which means you need to turn that shit down. When you get to my house, I'm daddy. I'm the king. 
You take care of me. I'm always going to take care of you. But when I come home, I need to feel that feminine energy from you. I don't want to feel anything masculine from you. Is that clear? And if she don't capitulate, you just leave her. You divorce immediately. Dissolution of marriage. Okay? And you might say, oh, that's cold. Try to work it out. No. Because a woman is very smart. She's either going to capitulate or she's not. She knows. If she chooses to surrender, great. She listen. But if she chooses to argue with you, oh, no, I don't want to do that. Okay, you know what? Don't worry about it. I'm going to take care of this tomorrow. We're going to meet with a lawyer and we're going to go ahead and kill this thing. Because you're just not the one for me and I'm not the one for you. See, that may sound cold, but that's a man that knows exactly what he wants. And a lot of you men, you don't know what you want. That's why you spend so much time in relationships and marriages that you know it's just doing you a disservice. You just stay there like crazy people. I'm doing it for the kids. You're not doing shit for the kids. Stop that bullshit telling me you're doing it for the kids. The kids see how toxic that household is. And now that toxicity is bleeding over to the kids. The kids uh, is going to think that's functional, think that's a proper way to be with a person. Some of you women stand in other bedrooms. I know about this. Trust me. I have friends. They, that's what they, they tell me. They don't sleep in the same bedroom as their own husband and wife. It's insane to me. Like, I couldn't live like that. I can get a hotel. I can get out of there. What's next? <clears throat> uh, Weston, please, what's that thing you put in your teeth always, even when you're on the live, that makes it white? Uh, yeah, I use Crest Strips. Question here, talk to me. Uh, and see, look at this. Look at this comment here. And it's a way to address your women respectfully. See, women, nothing against you, a black American goddess, but women that talk like that, like me personally, I never date them. I'm just going to be honest with you. And I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, young lady, but I just want to look what you wrote here. See, when a woman, when she automatically, she, uh, def uh, when she, uh, when she, <laughs> when she automatically, because, you know, she was either butthurt about what I said, you know, if I say that, hey, how are women should treat a man, then she says, well, it's a way to address your woman respectfully. Like she made it her business to share that on the live right now. And let me tell you something. It doesn't matter if it's true or false. You do that with a man like me, a high value man, he gonna put you in a box. You won't even know it. And the box is, you know what? Maybe I'll sleep with her, but I'll never be with her, ever. Because she's a woman that's overly opinionated. And I'm gonna be honest with you. You folks, when you hear the truth, like ladies, they all they like when they have this type of conversation here. You know, some of the ladies are very over opinionated and I get it. Have your opinions, but sometimes you need to shut your mouth. I'm going to be honest with you. And it's not just because I said shut your mouth doesn't mean I'm being disrespectful. So stop that. Don't be a freaking child. OK, but sometimes women, you got to be quiet. You always want to share your opinions. Oh, well, I feel this and I feel this. And I feel that what well, this happened, what well, this, 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 what are you doing? I mean, shh, shh, you got to be quiet sometimes. And listen, okay? And I'm not talking about if you're dealing with Pookie and Ray Ray. I'm talking about when you're dealing with a high-value band, okay? Just listen. Shh. Because this man is extremely intelligent. That's why he is where he is in life. Do you know less than 1% of men on the planet are millionaires? Less than 1%. 1% make $400,000 a year. Less than 1% make a million. You understand that you're dealing with a top tier individual here. And see, women don't even think about that, you know. And there's so many other, and there's so many reasons I can explain and share with you folks tonight on why women are like this, right? Because a lot of women, they're just, when they're in their 20s, man, they just, the ones that are attractive, they get all these accolades and compliments and money and all these things from men, and they don't have to do anything. They don't have to earn nothing. So they think that's just how it is. 
<laughs> they get all these compliments. They get the Gucci bags just for being pretty. Don't have to do nothing at all. So they assume that's just how it is until you start to get older and you find that that's not how it is. All right, what's next here? <clears throat> mm. Thank you for your apology. How important is developing yourself, developing, developing yourself to you today? How important is developing yourself to you today? That doesn't make sense, real king. Write that again and write it better, please. Thank you. Who is the best person to listen to in order to understand copy enough to be able to double check AI confidently? Um, I don't know about AI, but you need to listen to John Carlton, Dan Kennedy. Now, listen, I, I listen. I love AI, but AI has not developed in a way to write copy. Um, <laughs> to write copy to sell something? Nah, it's not ready yet. Nah, like you can't write an entire VSL. It, it just it, it does. It's not going to do it. It's not going to write it the way that it needs to be written. Does it make sense? Okay, it's not there yet. Who is the person? Who is the best person? Okay, I already answered that question here. Yeah, Crest Strips, C R E S T. When you speak on meditation, do you mean visualize or do you separate the two? No, meditation is a form of visualization. Listen, meditation itself, the word means to get familiar with the mind. So when you just sit down, close your eyes, and focus on your breathing, you're meditating, okay? And it's a different form of meditation. But I would say if you're a brand new meditator, just focus on your breathing, five, 10 minutes. That's all you need to do. Because you're teaching your mind to focus on one thing, okay? What's next here? Are you getting value here tonight, young people? Um, how do you get my long distance relationship boyfriend to marry me? Oh, how do I get my long distance relationship boyfriend to marry me? So, Chef Tingles, can I be honest with you? Can I be honest with you? everybody that has a long distance relationship? And listen, I'm not, once again, I'm not generalizing. I'm not saying everybody, but we'll, we'll say, um, a lot of people, um, long distant relationships, um, are very difficult. And like, I would never do that. And let me tell you why I would never do a long distant relationship because first of all, someone's going to cheat. It's just how it is. Someone's going to be, um, are they going to convince some type of infidelity act? It's just, it is what you'll never know. Right. Because a person is far away from somebody else, you don't know what people are doing. I mean, you just don't know. And, and I'm telling you, if you're in Houston, Texas, another person in California, man, it just it is what it is. People can have a whole another boyfriend, another girlfriend, especially a man. Um, Chef Tingles, I, I I would suggest this that I wouldn't suggest a long distance relationship. I think someone, either you or him, need to make a decision if you want to be together period, and be serious about it, which means somebody has to move. Either you have to move to where this man is or he needs to move to where you are. You trying to make him do something, that is, that's not how it's going to work. Because I could tell you how to make a man marry you, but you won't do it. And let me tell you what you do. You say, baby, I don't think this is working out. I love you, but I don't think this is working out. I don't think the loan this is going to work out for me. You know, I'm looking to be married. I'm looking to have kids. And this long distance thing is not going to work for me. So that's going to be the last day I speak to you. And if he just says, okay, he never cared about you. He never loved you. He didn't give a fuck, honestly. But if he says, no, 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 baby, I want you. I miss you. I love you. Okay, you know what, baby? I'm moving over there. I'm going to get a place. We'll get together. It makes sense. You make an effort. So you're not going to do that, Chef Tingles. I already know. So stop thinking that you're going to make a man marry you. You should never try to make a man Marry you first of all, trapping a man to marry you. That's insane. 
that's definitely not going to work out, right? But I don't suggest to be in a long distance relationship at all. To me, it's just, it's stupidity, honestly. I mean, come on. Long distance. Tell me, oh, I trust them. Stop it. I mean, come on. You're way over there. They're way over there. They can do. And men would love, I mean, men love long distance relationships, of course, because they can do whatever they want to do because you can't see them, right? They can. It, <laughs> it's just, I, I don't suggest it, okay? I, I don't suggest long distance relationships at all. And women, you got to be smart, okay? What's next? What's next here? I mean, I don't know that many. I don't know any long distance relationships that ended up in marriage. I'm pretty sure there are some, but not many. Okay. Uh, What's next here? I would tell women, don't do long-distance relationships. Like, if you're concerned about your man committing infidelity acts, don't do it. Just be smart. I mean, don't be don't be silly. And I get it. You must say, oh, I really like him. Okay, I get it. If you really like him, then find a way to be in the same city, same state, okay, or whatever. But, like, if you meet somebody, I mean, I know a ton of people. I knew this one guy I met, a girl in Mexico. You know, when you meet a girl on vacation, it's just the worst, right? You meet a girl on vacation and, you know, you have all this wonderful sex. You walk on the beach. You're like, oh, my God, I just get along with you, man. You know, I don't know. It's just something about you. You know, listen, this is how the conversation goes. You know, it's just something about you. You know, I just, I really like you. You know, I want to be with you. Man, I hate, I wish we can just stay here another week because, man, I just, I feel so good with you. You know, I feel just, oh, man, man, I wish we can. Which I can just stay there or you can just stay in my city or whatever, you know, I really just I like you a lot. And then you go your way, she go your way. You still in contact. You fly down there back and forth, fly down there back and forth. Then one day you're like, you know what? Why don't you just come down here and just stay with me? You know, because I love you. You know, because you're having all that good sex. Because that's what's fucking you up, honestly, it's the sex. You know, having all that great sex, the honeymoon phase, and you just... You know, you're just coming like crazy, you know, and just like glowing every day and just loving it, right? Then after a couple of months, they're staying with you. Then you're like, you want them to leave. And this happened to this young man that I know. And you know what's so funny? When he told me that he met this woman in Mexico and he decided to bring her to his home and stay with him, I said, bro, absolutely not. You need to leave her immediately. It's not going to work. But what do you mean by that? I love her. I bet, 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 bet. I said, bro. Oh, God. I mean, I said, bro, come on. Just send her back home. That was just a fling, man. That's all what it was. It's a fling. And I'm listen, I'm not saying that some of these flings don't lead to marriage, but not a lot of them, okay? When you meet somebody on vacation, it is what it is, man. You just have a good time, have fun, and don't go back to your regular life. And the reason why I brought that up, because it's the same thing what a man does when he's in a long-distance relationship. And a woman would do it, too. In a long-distance relationship, there's no commitments here. You can have fun when you want to. There's no commitments. Nobody checking on you. Right? So why would I even suggest? I don't know why people. I know why people do it, but I would suggest if you're truly looking for a committed relationship with a person. Okay? <clears throat> What's next here? Wes, can you teach us persuasion us persuasion techniques? Sure, sure. Well, would you like to know which as many persuasion techniques? What what do you want me to teach you? <sighs> so, ladies and gentlemen, he wants me to talk about how to influence people, how to get people to do stuff. So what you what do you want what what do you want people to do, you know? And and one thing, you know, when I tell people, you know, when people ask me that you know, because obviously I am a master influencer. I'm really good. You know, absolutely. I'm really, really good. If you ever met me in person, you'll you'll notice how great I am with it, right? I'm really, which means I just I usually get what I want. Maybe ninety nine point ninety nine point eight percent of the time. I just I just always because I know what I'm doing. I know exactly how to get what I want out of any situation. But I do it 
to make sure that both parties get served properly here, right? It's not about just me. It's about you getting what you want and me getting what I want and me framing it so you'll understand that what I say, that's what you want is what you actually need here. So I need you to be a little bit more specific on what, which techniques you want to hear or know uh, when it comes to human influence. And I got a ton of books on this stuff, folks. So you can just read it yourself. Um, how about getting people to buy? Yeah. So the thing is, if you want to get people to buy anything, it's very simple. Very simple. How many of you in the sales, you're a salesperson? Everybody should give me a thumbs up. Because if you want to run a business, you have to realize that you're a salesperson. You're selling something. Okay. This is it. This is how you sell anything to anybody at any given time. Okay. You got to first put people into the buying state. What does that mean? People that buy, they want to feel excited and they want to feel that they can actually do it. It's very important to know that. You know, when people buy things, they buy them because they're excited, right? And they buy them because they're like, this is going to help me do something. It's like when you watch those videos on on YouTube or TikTok or these face, I've been seeing these videos here, you know, women and men get rid of all this acne and, you know, and their faces. Oh, I use this soap. I use this butter. I use this cream. I seen one video. I use Neurosporin for deodorant, whatever, you know, all this stuff. So when people see that, they're excited when they see it. And based off the testimonial of the person, right, which is very powerful, it's what's called social proof, um, and get people to make a decision. So you got to put people in the buying state. You got to get them in the buying state, which means you have to get them excited about, you know, buying your product. So how do you do that? So listen, I mean, so many ways to do this because I do it on the internet. I'm sure how to do it on the internet, and I'm gonna do it right here on the phone. Okay, I'm mean, on the podcast here. So say if I was selling something on the internet, it was a video that I was creating here. And say if I was selling my product, Genie Script. This is what I would do very quickly. Say, hey, my name is Wesley Virgin here. And you're probably watching this video because you're not manifesting your dreams, right? You're reading books, you're slaving, working hard, flying around the world, going to business seminars. But you can't manifest anything. You're meditating, you're doing the chakras, numerology, everything. But it's not working for you. And you're sick and tired of getting up in the morning, going to work to a job that you can't stand, right? Nine to five grind. And who would want to do something for the same person, for the same paycheck for 20 to 30 years, right? People want to break free of that. Well, let me tell you why you have what is called a 3% and the 97% of the people on the planet. 97% of the people, they're the people that's going to complain, bitch, cry about how life sucks, life is unfair, they're depressed. They're stressed, they got anxiety, whatever. You don't want to be these people. The 3% of the people, well, they're flying around the world. They're taking vacations. They got shelves, eating good food, going to restaurants. They're happy. They're positive all the time. They look good. Skin look good. Body look good. White teeth. And people love these people, right? And guess what? You want to be the 3%. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, what if I told you that you can meditate? In a very distinctive way. You can meditate in the morning and in the evening. And you'll be able to get what you want. What do I mean get what you want? So imagine tomorrow morning. If you got access to what is called the genie script. Right? Which is the meditation program. That anybody can do this. Man or woman. Kid. Teenager. Doesn't matter if you're sleeping on the street right now. It will work for you. And turn your life around almost instantly. Say if you just got up every morning. And you said the script that I gave you in the program. And you would say it while you were meditating every day, day and night, for 45 days. And have an intention. And by you doing that, within 45 days, you mentally, your entire world changes. Opportunities that you thought were never there, they will come to you easily. Money that you thought you would never get will flow into your bank account like water flows in a bathtub. You will attract your significant other. 
the man or the woman of your dreams, the person that you really want, they will come to you easily and naturally and love you to life. Is that what you want? Is that the type of life you want to create? Well, all you have to do is click the yellow button below. And I get it. When you look at that yellow button, you think, well, I don't know it's going to work for me. What if I waste my money? What if this is a scam? Well, guess what? If it is, I give you a whole year to try it. And if you don't like it, I give you money back for a whole year. That means you can use this for an entire year. If you get no results, if nothing you like about it, if you hate the way that I talk, I give you money back because it works. We have thousands. And you'll see the thousands of people just like you who made a decision, who got access to the course. And now, I'm not saying everybody is rich and making millions of dollars, but you got many people and they don't have a job anymore. And they're on a Sunday night, they're not thinking about what they got to do at work. They're thinking about what time they're going to take the kid to school because they're picking up the kid and they're dropping off their kid to school. And that's what I want for you. See? You see what I just did there? I just sold you. What did I do there? I just told you a story. I talked about pain and pleasure. Right in the beginning, I talked about the pain. Most people are always in pain. Whenever you sell something, it's always the pain. Pain works. People buy because of pain. Right? It's called they avoid pain and they seek pleasure. So you just talk about the pain that's in people's lives. They don't want the pain. You don't want that pain, right? You don't want to be broke. You don't want to drive to work every single day fighting traffic, right? You want to get away from that pain. Well, the strip is your key to get out of the pain. If you want to stay in the pain, keep doing what you're currently doing. But if you want something new and different, if you want a whole new world open up to you right now, then I would suggest the Genie Script. It unlocks the doors to your land of paradise. You see how I did that? It's just pain and pleasure, man. I do it naturally because I've done it so many times. You just got to remember, when you're trying to sell somebody or trying to convince somebody to do something, just always think pain and pleasure. People do or move because of pain, mostly. They want to avoid the pain. That's why people take pills. They take pills because they want to avoid depression, so they take Prozac. A lot of things that we do, a lot of decisions that human beings make in life, it's because of we want to avoid the pain. That's why you won't quit your job, even though you can have pleasure, right? Many of you work a job right now, right? You're not making no money. You're making some bullshit like 5000 a month, 6000 a month, whatever, right? And you obviously can have pleasure if you start a business, but you won't do it because all you can think about is the pain of not having any money. That's it. So the pain that you want to avoid keeps you at the job, even though you can get pleasure because pain is a, it's a, it's a better motivator for people. That's why people, when they experience pain in their life, they tend to um, take a different direction towards something that's more optimistic or a new opportunity. They work out more pain. Pain is the motivator to move people to action. Remember that when you sell stuff. Pain. Talk about the pain. Then talk about the pleasure. Right? Then tell them that they don't have a lot of time, urgency, that, you know, this script is going fast. You might come to this page tomorrow morning and it's going to be sold out. Then you can say, then you can use scarcity. Right? These are called the seven weapons of influence. I'm not going to give you all of them, but I'll give you a few like scarcity. Scarcity means that we have two copies left. Amazon uses this. Walmart uses this. When you book a flight, it's always like that. Two more rooms left. Two more seats left. They're probably lying to you, but you won't know. It's called scarcity. You can use this, use this in your marketing all day long and make a lot of money. What's next? Yeah, I did have a nice Christmas. Yeah, I'm giving you, listen, show me some love below. I'm giving you folks some gems. I'm giving you information that I could easily charge you hundreds of thousands of dollars for. Are you kidding me? Show me some love. High energy, high income. Show me some love below. Okay? I'm giving you the keys. See, a lot of this information that I'm sharing with you tonight is what I'm going to write in books in the next 10 years. 
because I'm waiting till I'm old. <laughs> because some of the stuff I'm going to write in his books, in these books that I'm going to write, it's going to be insane. Because I'm truly going to tell people, men and women, I'm going to write a book for men and I'm write a book for, for women. Right? I'm going to write a book on how men need to be to navigate the world like a king. And when you navigate the world like a king, everybody wants to be around you. Everybody likes you. Everybody wants to be you. They love you. They're happy for you. I mean, it's almost like you're living in a positive bubble. Okay? So I'm going to write that book very soon. But I'm giving you glimpses and snippets of it tonight here. So take it in because influence and persuasion is a part of the equation of becoming this type of individual. There you go. Give me my flowers now. Don't wait till I die. I want my flowers right now. Show me my love right now. I don't want anybody celebrating when I die. You know, I don't need to hear all this celebration when I die. Celebrate me now. Like put a mirror on the wall, just like just like you did George Floyd, right? And he didn't even do anything incredible, you know. We had mirrors of this man all over the world. Well, let me let me get a mirror for me. Paint me on the wall, on somebody's wall in somebody's city. Celebrate me now. Don't wait till I die. Uh uh. Celebrate me right now. Okay. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate that. Yeah, I'm giving you the presents tonight, huh? You know, and listen, can I talk from the top of my heart real quickly here? It's because I love you. That's why. It's because I really love you. And I don't even know you. I don't know a lot of you. But I love you. Because I used to be just like you, 100%. I used to be just like you. Broke. Job, uncertain, lazy, unfocused, always want to be in the pleasurable moments in life. Yeah. Used to be just like you. That's why I love you. And that's why I want you to change. And that's why I want you to understand that you can change. It doesn't mean that you will change, but I want you to understand that you can. Whether it's this year, next year, two years from now, four years from now, you can change. It's up to you, though. Okay? What's next here? <laughs> Thank you so much, folks. What's next here? Thanks for the badge, Cena. Thank you so much. Questions here. Any questions before I let you go? Daddy got work to do. King West has work to do, of course. It's no sleep. High energy! High income! Keep your energy up high. Okay. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. And I'm, I'm feel. I'm fueled up right now, babe. I'm feeling good. I'm going to the gym in about, what, seven hours here. Barber will get here around 11, get a haircut, and off to the gym. I'm ready for anything. What foods you recommend to give you energy for supplement? Uh, typically in the morning, I just have a smoothie, just a shake. That's about it. Uh... I don't I don't eat food until after one o'clock. How do you find the f other five motivating stuff? The other five? What do you mean? I'm not understanding your question here. What changed is you, Wes? What changed in you? Oh, what do you mean what changed to me? You mean when I was just like a lot of you, not getting results? Well, if you want me to be honest with you, I just had to stop bullshitting and stop lying to myself. See, many of you just lying to yourself about 
you know, how bad you want to be successful and how bad you want to be rich and how bad you want to be a better person and how you want to have this outstanding, juicy life. You're just lying to yourself. And and the reason why I say I say that you're lying because like your actions, your actions are not aligned with what you're saying. So me, that's what changed in me. I just, I had to stop bullshitting myself. I had to stop lying to myself. Talking about, well, y'all really want this, but I'm chasing women. I really want this, but I'm watching and playing video games. I really want this, but I'm hanging out with my boys. I mean, you know, it's just, I had to stop lying to myself. That's what changed. And I began to... I began to lead myself. I began to lead myself. I stopped trying to lead everybody else. I stopped trying to tell everybody what they should do. And I began to tell myself what I supposed to do or what I should do. And I had to actually do it. Right? Because you can't lead other people until you can lead yourself. You can't tell other people what they should do until you actually follow through on what you should do in your life. So that's what changed. Thank you. Wes, how is the statement that the system was created to keep the poor Poor, poor people, poor, while making the rich richer. Um, well, you know, I don't know where the statement come from, but I do understand it in context and know why it's applicable into what's taking place in the modern world. Like, think about it. The poor stays poor because of the mentality. Poor people, it doesn't matter how much money you give them. I give you an example. In February, a lot of people are going to get income tax checks, right? They're going to get an income tax check, $2,000, $5,000, $10,000, whatever. And these people, before they even get to check, the poor people, because this is how poor people think, before they even get to check, they have already spent the money. It's gone. Clothes, shoes, things they don't need at all. So that's why the poor just get poor because of their mindset and how they think. You know, it doesn't matter how much money you give a poor person with a poor mentality. They just find a way to get rid of it because that's what poor people do or average people. They find a way to get rid of money. When Friday hits and it's time to get paid or direct deposit, people typically just spend that money. They just do because they got to go out. They want a new purse. They want a new this. They want a new that. So they just spend the money. And the richer gets richer because of their mentality. It's not because I'm making you poor. It's not because I'm taking all your money. No. It's just how you think. So rich people, they just have different thoughts around money. And poor and average people, they have different thoughts as well. And they just choose to give their money away. Wow, rich people, we invest our money. We make more of it. All right, any more questions before I let you go here? I think I'm going to let you guys go here. My eyes starting to hurt here. But um, thank you for everybody that joined here tonight. Um. Thank you for listening. And remember, if you ever listen, if you want to be a very a serious student of success, state of success. I have a podcast, I have over three hundred episodes of the Millionaire Midnight Rant. I know people who have binge listened to me. They just listen to me all day long. They listen to me at their job. They listen to me uh, on the toilet, in bed, in the morning, at night. They're always listening to me. So that's what I suggest for you 
if you're truly serious about elevating your life financially here, okay? Because one of the components of wealth is who do you listen to? Who do you listen to? It's very important. Like, who are you going to listen to for the next five years? Because whoever you listen to will determine your finances, your wealth, your net worth, your income, who you're listening to. Hey, I love you guys so much. I appreciate you so much as well. This is Wesley, Billion Dollar Virgin. Much love and let's go.